I'm Brady Krizowitz from Keeper for a Cure, and welcome to 10 Questions with a Pro. Today's guest is Michelle Bedos, who was born February 20th, 1988. She is an American professional soccer player who plays as a goalkeeper for Old Rain in the National Women's Soccer League. She previously played for Portland Thorns FC and the New York Fury in 2015 while playing for Portland Beatles, won the NWSL Goalkeeper of the Year Award. Now I'm so excited to have Michelle on 10 Questions with the Pro. Michelle, thank you for being on the show and taking time to chat with me. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me, Brady. Thanks for coming on. All right. You ready to jump into these questions? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Why did you become a goalie? Uh, I became a goalie because when I was a kid, um, they, uh, I was playing with a boys team actually, and everybody was running around and they asked who wanted to be a goalkeeper. And I was curious if that meant I could stop running around. And once they said it was, uh, I jumped in net. Um, and then I never really wanted to leave. I found a home there. Yeah. I, once I started, I just found a love for the position. It's kind of addicting after a while. You're like, you do one practice and you're like, I want to do more. I want to do more. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You don't feel comfortable unless you're in the 18 yard box then. Yeah. Um, now what's your favorite part of being a goalkeeper? I think my favorite part is just the fact that I get to help my team win. Um, I love, you know, being able to help my defenders, help the team. You know, I want to, for me, my goal is always to build trust. You know, I want them to, feel like they can play freely so because if they have a mistake I have their backs you know I'm going to help them Mm -hmm. organize I'm going to help them defend Um, I'm going to help try to keep us in the game so that you know when our forwards do score it counts for something and we win the game you know I think that that's my favorite part just kind of having the teams back and doing whatever I can to help yeah because the goalkeepers got the teammates backs like if they need help they've got their back exactly exactly Yeah. What motivates you to keep training hard to maintain being a professional goalie? Um, I think my biggest motivation is that I just love the feeling of getting better. You know, the little things every day, I love seeing them pay off. You know, I think that, you know, games and certain things are, you know, the big things that everybody sees, but I think it's like the little things every day that I enjoy the most, you know, the save I couldn't make last week or, you know, doing something better with my feet or something like that. To me, just, you know, that chasing mastery, that accomplishing mastery and then growing and growing. That's, you know, I think that that's what motivates me every day. Yeah. To keep growing because you get to one thing and then you get better, but there's always that gap between you and what frustrates you and, what you're bad at. You got to keep training hard to keep getting higher to whatever the next level is for you. Exactly. Exactly. You got to keep closing the gap one by one, inch by inch. Yep. Um, what steps help you achieve the ability to become a professional level goalkeeper? Um, I think the biggest thing for me is similar to what you just said, you know, figuring out, you know, what, you know, the best in the game do, and then figuring out what the gap is between me and them, and then slowly closing that or, you know, looking at myself and figuring out, okay, how can I get better at things? And then, yeah, I think that I just, you know, I try to approach every day trying to figure out how can I get better? How can I maximize this day? What's one thing I can work on? What's one thing I can focus on? Um, And then just doing that day after day, you know, taking care of my body, making sure I'm ready for training. Um, I think it's the little things you do every day that add up. Count the most. Mm-hmm. The little things that help a lot. Um, exactly. What sacrifices did you make through your life to be able to become a professional goalkeeper? I feel like the sacrifices probably never end. Um, you know, I, I'm away from my family. Um, my whole family's on the East Coast, and I'm super close to them. And I've been on the West Coast for pretty much my whole professional career um, or overseas. Um, I think growing up, you know, missing parties, missing things on the weekend because I was always, you know, playing games and things like that. But, you know, a lot of the smaller things like games, proms, dances, things like that, they don't feel like sacrifices because I was doing something I love so much. But I think the thing that, you know, is probably the hardest is just being away from friends or family that are in different places of the world. Yeah, because the sacrifices that me the 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 uh, sacrifices that your m- friends might think that are sacrifices to you, they're not sacrifices at all. Because you're doing what you love, and exactly. just hanging out with friends that's not going to help you get any better at soccer. Practicing when 
there's dances or going to the movies or going to the mall that they're going to get worse and you're going to get better each each day by each day exactly exactly um if you weren't a professional goalie what else would you be oh that's tough um i think uh, when I'm done playing, I really want to be either like a sports psychologist or, you know, work with top level athletes. I think in like a completely separate dream world, I'd be like a professional chef or something like that because I love to cook and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what have you done off the field and on the field that you're most proud of? Oh, I mean, I think on and off the field, I think I have just watched myself grow. You know, I think that I've constantly challenge myself to up level myself you know i think that the the two go together you know anytime i've tried to play on a better team or make a team or become a starter or you know anything like that or grow my professional career um it's really involved me to be better off the field you know whether it's in my habits whether it's in the things i'm learning growing reading um i'm just proud of you know the steps i've taken and oh, when i look over my 10-year career how far i've come from when i really started it yeah, because when you look back at what you used to do, you watch game replays and stuff. You look at all those mistakes you did, and you're like, what am I doing? And then you <laughs> yeah, get better exactly. from looking at those old highlights and stuff because you see what you're doing wrong, and you fix those mistakes. Exactly. What goalies or soccer players inspired you to want to be a professional? Uh, growing up, I thought Brianna Scurry was – such a cool athlete because she had actually, I mean, she was so good at soccer and she was a goalkeeper, but also she had played basketball in college, which I thought was really cool because I played a lot of basketball growing up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll, honestly, till recently, there weren't a lot of women that I really followed in the game. You know, when I was younger, it was mostly men playing soccer that I saw on TV. So, you know, Tim Howard or, you know, Manuel Neuer or yeah. Casillas, you know, things like that. But now, you know, you look around the world and there's so many good female goalkeepers and athletes yeah. too. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's awesome what you're doing, inspiring young goalkeepers, like female goalkeepers, because I'm really hoping like girls like you will inspire my sister to be a pro someday. I hope so, too. Yeah. Um, what are your favorite gloves to wear in net and why? Um, I have the Renegade gloves. Um, I recently signed with them as a company because I just love the fit. Um, I think the cut is really great. It's like a perfect thickness where it can still feel the ball, but I feel really cushioned in them. Um, and I just like the wide fingers on them and they come like all cool colors and stuff like that. But um, I really like the way they feel and I really like the way they feel with the ball in my hand. I think I have like good control and great grip. Yeah, I, I had one pair of Renegades before. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know the red and yellow ones. Yeah, they have all different models all the time. Um, yeah, but, they're yeah. one of the older versions. Okay, did you like them? Um, yeah, they were okay. Okay, cool. Um, is there a save that you made that really sticks out in your mind? There is one save that I often think about when people ask me that because I was playing in Portland at the time and I saw Yoris the goalkeeper for Tottenham. I saw him make this save where he took this big crossover step and he got back post and he top hand parried the ball. And I just thought it was such a great save. And it wasn't footwork that I felt like I was really good at. So I'd actually filmed it and watched it over and over and over. And then, you know, probably for a couple of years, you know, I just watched it every day for a couple seconds a day. And in a game against Kansas City at the time, I made almost an identical save. And I thought it was just so cool because I'd been wanting to do that for so long. And I watched him do it. And then all of a sudden, without even thinking about it, I was able to do it. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. What it, Did it feel weird making like at a, I had an identical save? Yeah, I mean, I think I didn't. You know, you're in a game. Your head's so focused on the game. But after I made it, there was just this split second that I was like, whoa. And then when I watched the video back, I was like, wow, that really was similar. Like, that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, like it's like you put the same hand placement and everything. Yeah, yeah, it was really weird. It actually inspired me to watch like a lot more videos and see what else I could like take from other goalkeepers. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give a young goalkeeper like me that wants to play at a professional level? 
I, my number one thing I would say to any goalkeeper is use your feet, use your feet, use your feet, because I think that that just becomes such a huge part of the game. Um, and it wasn't something that was really stressed when I was a kid, but it's such a big part of the game now. Um, but other than that, the only thing I would say is just keep working. You know, I think as a goalkeeper, there's so many expectations of you. You know, you need to be great with your feet. You need to be good on crosses. So I would just say keep training, train different things every day and play different sports because I think you know, playing basketball and football and things like that, all, tennis, things like that, they all help with your reaction time, your footwork, and it helps you train in a different way. So I think early on, I would say find different ways to train and, you know, work on your athleticism. And then as you specialize, as you get older, just really focus on the tiny details. Yeah, that's, I've never really thought of that tennis and stuff like the hand-eye coordination and how you hit the ball. Yeah. Um, I'll have to do that because that's really going to help me out. I thought just doing soccer, focusing on one sport is going to help you most of all, but doing different sports like how your hand placement is and when you shoot the ball in basketball is it's really important. Yeah, yeah, and all the footwork too. I think it, I think it's really big. You know, I always think about that. I think, and as a goalkeeper, you know, you've, you're almost playing a few sports in one. You know, the field players just have to pass and run. You know, we have to do all that, and we have to jump and dive and, you know, judge yeah. ball in the air, things like that. Yeah, it's funny because I just came back from practicing, and we were working on, like, only footwork and dives and stuff. Really? That's cool. That's yeah. Really cool. Um. Now, do you have any questions for me? Uh, No. I mean, I just want to know how you became such a cool kid because I wish I knew, <laughs> knew um, when I was your age. I think I think your mindset and your approach is pretty phenomenal. I think you'll be able to do whatever you want to do. Um, I think it was just starting off Instagram and stuff early because once I got more and more followers, I think a lot of people started like doing a lot more drills and stuff. And then I sort of inspired them to get uh, more inspired to do drills and stuff on Instagram. And it's not just me. It's all the pros on Instagram and everything, not even on Instagram, like any app. You could just see them like trainers stuff. They inspire people. Yeah, that's really cool. And why is this cause so important to you? Um, well, Keeper for a Cure is really important to me because I've had people in my, uh, I've had family members who have had breast cancer and one of them died from it. So it, it really hurt me when I found yeah. out that happened. Yeah, I think what you're doing is really amazing. It's going to help a lot of people. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks. Any other questions? I don't think so. I just, I probably want to get your autograph before you make it big. So <laughs> let's, let's find a way to make that happen. Okay. okay. Um, Michelle, thank you so much for coming on 10 questions with a pro. I really appreciate your time and it was an honor to speak to you. Remember to check out the show and all our other shows on our YouTube channel. We also have a podcast version of the show on Spotify and iTunes. Just search Keeper for a Cure and remember to subscribe and like. Check out our website, www.keeperforacure.com, to see how you can help my Keeper for a Cure campaign, which is raising money for the Phillips Cancer Center in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm Brady Krizowitz, and my guest was Michelle Bitos. Thank you for turning in to 10 Questions with the Pro. Thanks, Brady.